Uh, good afternoon, we're Team 10. Team, uh, this is me in charge of uh, robotic and stitch talent group. My name is Rahim Maliki. So, we're building a robot that teaches uh, children sign language. Uh, we believe that the children these days overstimulate in, um, in learning sign language. So, we believe the robot will uh, improve their uh, enthusiasm into learning the language. Also, we believe the robot can be used by the adults who wish to learn sign language. Okay, American Sign Language was introduced by Dr. Thomas Hopkins in 1814. ASL, was evo uh, ASL evolved from uh, French Sign Language. The story behind that is uh, Dr. Thomas Hopkins had a uh, deaf neighbor who he wished uh, to communicate with. So he traveled uh, to France to learn the uh, method of teaching the language. And then when he came back, in, uh, when he came back, in 1817, he opened the first college to uh, teach sign language. And then in 1864, uh, Congress passes a new law that, uh, uh, that allows um, colleges to issue degrees. As you can see here in the robotic history, Leonardo da Vinci uh, sketched humanoid robot was in 1495. Uh, 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 and uh, it was found out with a sketchbook in uh, 1950, they found the humanoid robot. And the term robot was found in 1920 by Carl uh, Caprick, uh, was, uh, was before any mechanization, mechanization made. And the first mechanical arm uh, patent in 1954 was granted in 1961 by uh, George Devil and was and it was uh, was supported from the Joseph Frederick, the father of robotics, who was supported from him and gave the money. And the references of the standards we have the ISO the standard and the ANSI and the IFR and the ASL standards, the American Sign Language. Here we could see the our standards we use for the safety and the mobile robot. We research and find the best uh, possible key options for P, ICOM, and Inmova projects. This table can show the reasons why we choose the Inmova project because the price was really good for us, enough degree of the freedom, and separable looks. On the other hand, the ICOM wasn't, uh, the price wasn't fair for us, it was expensive, up $1,000. Uh, and uh, the Pope Pope project, the degree of the freedom, freedom wasn't enough for us. Okay, so the project uh, contains three divisions: uh, printing, assembling, and uh, programming. They kind of uh, have to go together uh, in order to finish the project on, on time. So we started printing um, in January and ended up in April. While we were printing, we we were also um, assembling and program the servers at the certain position. And we ended, up, ended in April. When we look at the parts we had to print, uh, 28 for the left hand, 30 for the left bicep, for so total 52 for the left arm, and then 31 for shoulder and torso. As we see also, the average time printing for clear part was three to four hours. In total of 300, uh, 300, Total time printing. Now, assembly started by first assembling the forearm and also uh, putting the servos in the forearm. All the servos, the five servos that were for the fingers. We would then went next like printing the wrist and the fingers themselves. After doing that, we printed the bicep and then we printed the, the torso on um, the past of the torso, put everything together and like you can see the final product of that. So we have to do everything step by step or print what we needed at the time because. The printer we're using was like being used by lots of groups at the same time. We had to like make sure like our time was properly managed to make sure like the project was going along effortlessly. Where you can see like after um, printing the wrist, we said like test the wrist out to make sure it, it actually worked before we like, put on the next uh, put it on the next part. We also had to like modify a lot of our servos because the servos we have right now are the, the um, degree of freedom from 90 degrees to 180, but we needed continuous serv continuous rotation servos. 
and the servos right now that are continuous rotation out in the market are not strong enough to like actually lift the robot so we decided to like research instead of uh, to modify one of the stronger servos to make it 360 uh, degree servo so what we did was we cut we cut off the stoppage and that's and also remove the, uh, the potentiometer from inside the servo to put them in right in places around the, the robot yeah, after assembling, we are actually tested everything out to make sure everything works like we wanted it to. And the next video shows us I've, I've been like um, from clean it up and like cut off all the threads to like actually test out the fingers. So for the pro programming aspect uh, for the project, we started, uh, our initial uh, choice was to use Arduino, but we found out that Arduino doesn't have enough memory to support the uh, program for the project. So we decided to go with uh, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, coupled with Adafruit using uh, my robot lab and a Python language. For, uh, we, we used that configuration for the assembly. And during the assembly, we found uh, a more sufficient, uh, a more sufficient uh, programming method, which is ADB D4 robot control controller. So, uh, as you can see here, we uh, paired up the Raspberry Pi and the Adafruit, because uh, Adafruit has 16 pins, uh, which make the programming uh, much easier to do. And we have here our three servos, uh, the HS805BB, uh, which has the maximum torque of 24.7 kilogram with a mass of uh, 152. And we have five of them that were for the fingers. And the uh, MG996R, which is the maximum torque of 11 kilogram and 50, 50, 55 grams, which we have only one. Uh, which is for the list. And we have the MK15298B, uh, uh, the mass torque of 18 kilograms uh, centimeters and the mass of 66, uh, 66 grams. And we had four of them for the shoulder and the rest. Here yeah, we can see the My Robot Lab uh, platform, which is basically which runs uh, Python as an in uh programming language. So when we write the code in Python, what, what it gives us is what it gives us is this uh, window right here, which makes control, uh, controlling the servos much easier. It's because initially, to test out the risk, what we had to do was we had to type out like several lines of code to make the servos go back and forth to test it out. But right now, we found out we use this, which, is this, which basically gives us a, a slider bar at the top, which we're able to slide back and forth to actually move the servos. So this was something we found out using Raspberry Pi. So that's how we're able to like assemble the um, robot. Now, for um, upon assembling, we decided to like use the EZB V4 controller to actually control the robot to do the final programming. Now the EZB4 has 24 digital pins, that's eight analog pins. It also has the capability of our voice commands and it has an inbuilt speaker, the EZB builder application, and perhaps the most versatile aspect of the EZB EZB V4 is its Wi-Fi capabilities because right now it's able to basically uh, be able to control it over Wi-Fi and uh, wirelessly. Now, as a uh, snapshot of the of the uh, easy, easy builder application, what the application does is basically you um, decide like what frames you are, you, you program different frames of uh, the sign language, like a frame here, a frame there, and the build um, the application actually calculates every frame in between so you don't have to do that. So that's why one of the reasons why this made programming so much easier as like language is uh, very complex. So we, will, we don't want to waste too much time on the programming aspect of it as we have to also consider like building it as well. To cover aspects of global design component, we use an open source design to be available for everyone around the world. We also use EDB V4 speech recognition, which is recognized in multiple languages, such as English, German, French, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, both uh, simplified and traditional. This is table shows the cost analysis briefly for the left arm.
with all engineering endeavors, we are, we're about to face challenges, and some of the, here are some of the challenges we face. Like the print accuracy. Like when we're printing, when we're printing our parts, we find that like, you, when you print two parts on the printer we had, like the two parts never came out to be exactly the same size, which was very difficult for us, like at first, when we, uh, we started printing. But remembering to one of our lectures, fit form function, we tried to like modify all the parts based on those principles. If uh, we need the parts to be very accurate, we had to like make, make the, uh, the the resolution of the printer very high, which took a lot of time. If the parts were well didn't need to be that accurate, we decided to like give them a slower or slower or faster print time and lower resolution. So that's how we were able to like uh, overcome that. And also servo selection. Like I said earlier, like we needed some of the servo, some of our servos to be 360 degree servos, and the servos we found were like not quite, so we decided to modify them. So that's how we will think that. And also time, like we have four different team members on this team, and we all have different time schedules. So we had to like figure out like when each one of us was going to come to the lab to print, and so a lot of us had to like sacrifice basically our weekends, like make sure the program, the, the robot kit, was uh, progressive, progressing as we like it to. And here we have the robot doing a few signs in like uh, in ASL. We have the first sign. Uh, the first sign is good. It starts to come up and down. The second sign it does is bad. It comes up, out, and down. And the third sign it's going to do is blue. Basically, it comes up and goes like that and back down. Now, while the robot seems to move, be moving effortlessly, it makes a lot of noise. And we found like the best way to like reduce the amount of the amount of noise the robot makes is by improve like using different servos. Now, the this this current servos we have up there right now are the best we can get for the price range which, which we set for ourselves. Any more, and the price jumps by about four hundred percent increase in price because the next servo I believe was about uh, three hundred and forty dollars to um, to get, which is like for one servo. To like reduce the amount of noise it makes and makes like the uh, robots move even faster. So we we're able to find like a bigger sponsor, but we really, really like to improve this project because it's like a very fun project, I should say. All right, for future works, we also like to like uh, add servos for uh, an, an additional servo for the wrist because right now the wrist just rotates back and forth. Also, double actuating thumb because the thumb we need it to be able to do more than just come in and out. The thumb has to be able to like close and alongside the other fingers have to be able to come open and close and also come in and out. And also we would like to build the right hand for the uh, for an improved vocabulary and also adding the uh, face for facial expressions because as you know sign language is a language so and sometimes you need a facial expression to properly convey what you're trying to talk about. And also be a better power source. Right now we're using the battery that has a uh, 4000 milliamp hours and providing 7 volt, 7.2 volts to all the batteries, which is able to uh, properly run all 10 servos currently on this for about 15 minutes. But we need it to be able to do, go longer than that, as the average class time for each classroom is about 45 minutes to an hour right now. So we'd like to give special recognition and thanks to like Dr. Anthony Abrao. When we when we're like struggling with the Raspberry Pi, he was the first person like we went to, as he, like, he has like an extensive knowledge on Raspberry Pi. Also, Rodrigo, because towards the end of our programming, uh, towards the end, was the one that guided us towards uh, what platform we should be programming on. And Melissa, she was the one who provided us with like the printer which printed all the parts on. And last, oh, actually, Angel, <laughs> one of our fellow students here, was very, very, uh, yes, some resources which we use basically, and I said I was promising to put them on there. Last but not least, Dr. Sabrito Sunobu has guided us through the last two semesters to where we are right now. Since you're going to maybe install this in a, like a classroom or something, have you thought about using a transformer, plugging it into 110 and getting rid of the battery process that you'd have to go through? We actually then you'd have to worry about time frame. Yes. We actually looked through like several possibilities out there. We got a few of them, but 
we found out like the EZB V4 is very picky about what you provide us. So that's one of the reasons why we, we went with the battery for right now. But the like, uh, this time, if you provide if you provide it with anything less than six point six volts, it's it's uh, it tells you like it's that speaking to you. It says my battery is low. And if you provide it, if you don't provide with enough amperage to all the servos, they all do not function properly. As you can see, like several servos have to move at the simultaneously in order to like do this. But that's something we're currently looking into, though. So right now your prototype can only do three slides, but No, oh. like if you go back, if you go back, go back, back. <coughs> there we go, no, one more. Yeah, we have the library of all the signs you can do, but we just did like three, just like an uh, account for like time we have to. Okay, are there any that we couldn't do? Just... Yes. There are, there are several signs you couldn't do because that's one of the reasons why we're trying to like improve, add more servos to improve the way the angles move so that because a lot of signs like some of the fingers can go like this easy but they can't go like this okay. like that's why we're trying to add more servos to make the fingers be able to do that and especially the thumb it's very important for the thumb to be able to come in and out instead of just going like that so that's one of the this is why we're trying to add more servos for the for the end Is your robot, is your robot uh, designed to be safe? Yes, yes. Like all the all the parts are designed like like they won't pinch you. Like this is this isn't primarily our design. Like I said, it's an open source design. It's in move. But when we we are looking at it, like everything has like final casing, which make sure make sure that there is no part that that will pinch you, and all those um, wires will talk the way correctly. But this is, like I said, it's uh, the first prototype for the sign language. I mean, it can't grab you. It can't no. hit you <laughs> by accident. It can't slap you across the face. None of those things. Oh, I honestly, by accident, I maybe try programming for you kind of thing? I, I, I try, but uh, unfortunately, no, it's not so strong enough. <laughs> it's not strong enough. The servos won't like, let it do that. <laughs> Robot, you know. <laughs> 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 it wasn't me. Robot did. Someone said someone for the You guys had a cost of right? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's, uh, for the just left hand, this is about five hundred and thirty four dollars in memory serve. We had huge yellow lines on the floor. So. The heck That's not so accounting the print time. The print time was about three hundred, but no, since we got like the printer from the department, okay. we didn't so, 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 that five hundred and sixty seven. So you would have with the printer that would be on Yes, like I'm making about six dollars uh, per hour to print and three hundred three hundred hours of print time. You're looking at the price going up to about eighteen hundred dollars. It's a fairly expensive project. <laughs> Thank you.